This is part 25 of AngularCRUD tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss creating a custom validator in Angular template driven forms. This is continuation to part 24, so please watch part 24 before proceeding. Notice within our department select list, the first default option is select department. We want to make sure a valid department is selected. If select department is selected, then we want to validate and display department is required validation error. Notice the default option HTML is right here. If we can set this default option value to null, then the Angular built-in required validator works just fine. We discussed this in detail in our previous video. But for some reason, if you are not able to set the value of this default option to null may be because you are loading this option from a database table or for some other reason then this built-in required validator does not work. The reason it's not working is the default option value. In our case it is minus one. So this value is being treated as a valid selection. Notice the model right here we have that minus one against the department property. So it's treating this value as a valid selection but we know this is not a valid department selection so we want the required validation to fail. To make this work the way we want we are going to implement a custom validator. To use a custom validator in template driven forms we have to create that validator as a directive. Once we have the directive created we can then use the directive as an attribute on the select element that we want to validate. This is going to be a configurable and reusable validator. We can use it with any select list in an Angular application. I'm going to place our custom directive within a shared folder. At the moment, within our project, we don't have a shared folder. So let's create that within this app folder. Let's name the folder shared. And let's place our custom directive within this shared folder. And I'm going to name our custom directive select required validator and since this is a directive I'm going to give it this dot directive suffix and this is a TypeScript file so it also has a dot ts extension. Just like how a component is a class in Angular a directive is also a class so first let's go ahead and create a class. I'm going to name this class select required validator directive. Since we are creating a custom validator this class must implement this validator interface. We don't have this validator interface imported yet. So let's go ahead and include the required import statement. So we want to import validator from Angular Forms. Now, when creating a component class, we decorate that component class with at component decorator. Along the same lines, when we create a directive, we decorate the class with at directive decorator. We don't have this directive imported yet, so let's include the required import statement to import it from Angular Core. Now, once we are done creating this directive, we are going to use it as an attribute on the select element that we want to validate. Our department select element is right here. So on this select element, I'm going to use our directive as an attribute like this. Notice, for example, if we want to use a required attribute, we just use that required attribute on the select element. Similarly, when we have our custom validator ready, we are going to use that directive as an attribute like this. So we need to give our directive a selector. So let's include the selector property here. And if we are creating a component, we include the selector in a pair of single quotes like that. Since this is a directive and a directive is used like an attribute, we need to enclose that with a pair of square brackets like that. Notice our validator class is implementing the validator interface. So you can imagine what is our next logical step is going to be. We need to provide implementation for the method that this validator interface provides. And that method is validate. And this method is going to take in one parameter and that parameter is the control that we want to validate and notice the type of the control is abstract control. We don't have it imported yet so let's import it from angular forms. Now you might be wondering 
y is the type of the control that we want to validate is specified as abstract control and not anything else. Now if you take a look at our create employee form, we have several controls on this form like we have a text box, a checkbox, drop down list etc. All these elements are represented as form control in Angular. So we have a class called form control. Now why are we not using that type for the control that we want to validate? We're using a different class and that's called abstract control. Now it turns out this abstract control is the parent class for both form control and form group classes. Now what is a form group class? If you look at our create employee component, at the top we have our form element. Now this form element is represented as form group class in Angular and this abstract control class is the parent class for both form control and form group. And in addition to this root form group here represented by the form element, we can also have nested form groups. We'll discuss nested form groups in our upcoming videos in this series. So to allow us to be able to pass either a form group or a form control to this validate method, Angular has decided to use the parent type which is the abstract control. Next, let's specify the return type. This method is going to return either an object or null. This method returns null if the validation succeeds and it returns this object if the validation fails. And this object is going to contain a key and a value pair. Key is of type string and the value is of type any. If this syntax does not make sense at the moment, don't worry, it'll be clear in just a bit. Let's format this code a bit. Now let's implement our validation logic within this validate method. So what is our requirement here? If someone selects this first option, select department, then we want the validation to fail. So if the selected option value is minus one, then the validation should fail, otherwise it should succeed. Notice we are passing the control that we want to validate as a parameter to this method. In our case, we are passing the select element. So I'm going to include a boolean expression here. So if the control value is minus one, then we know the user has selected the first option. So in that case, we want to fail the validation. And we know this validate method returns this object if the validation has failed. So let's return the object. And this object is going to contain a key and a value pair. And we know key is of type string. And this can be any string, but I'm going to return this string default selected to indicate that the user has selected the default option. And the value can be anything, but I'm going to specify a boolean true to indicate that the validation has failed. Now, if the user has not selected minus one, then we know he selected a valid department. In that case, I want to return null indicating that the validation has succeeded. Let's include the return keyword. Now, we know this control here is our select element. And when Angular validation system detects that we are returning an object, it's going to assign this key here to the errors collection of our select element. And then we can use this key within the view template to determine if this custom validator has failed validation and then display the appropriate validation error message. So within our view template, let's scroll down to the department select list. Notice we have the span element that displays the validation error message right here. And we want this span element to be added to DOM only if the department field is touched and if the department fields errors collection property has got this key default selected. Remember, this is the key that we set when our custom validator fails validation. So we are using that to show or hide this validation error message. And notice we are using our custom required validator just like how we are using the other built-in validators like required. Since we are already using our custom required validator, we don't have to use this built-in required validator. So let's get rid of that. Now, before we can use our custom validator, we have to register our custom validator 
with a list of validators that Angular already maintains. And we do that by using this providers property. So these three properties here register our custom validator. We don't have this ng validators imported, so let's import it from Angular Forms. Now, if you look at this providers syntax right here, it's a bit complicated, so let's break it down. The first question that comes to our mind is, what is this ng validators? It's all in capital letters. This is called opaque token in Angular. We'll discuss what an opaque token is in detail in our upcoming videos in this series. For now, understand this ng validators is an opaque token and it contains the list of all validators including the Angular built-in validators. For us to be able to use our custom validator, we'll have to register it with ng validators and that's the reason we have set use existing property value to our custom validator class and then to signal to Angular to add this validator to its list, we also need to set this multi-property to true. Finally, we need to import our custom required validator in the module where we want to use it. At the moment, within our project, we only have one module and that is our root module. So let's open the root module file which is app.module.ts and include the required import statement to import it and then we also need to specify the type within the declaration array. Let's save all our changes and then take a look at the browser. Notice now when we touch the department field and leave it without selecting a valid department, we see the validation error right away. And when we select a valid department, the error disappears. If we select the first option again, which is not a valid department, we see the error back. So it's all working as expected. Now, notice within our custom validator, we have hard-coded the invalid option value, which is minus one. Now, let's say for some reason, we change that invalid option value, which is minus one at the moment, to something along the lines of minus one zero one. Now, when we do this, we also have to change our custom validator code. Now, remember, we discussed we want this validator to be configurable and reusable. At the moment, the way we have implemented it, it's not configurable and it's also not reusable. Meaning, if we want to use this validator with a select list whose default option value is something like this, minus 101, you know, it's not going to work. In our next video, we'll discuss how to make this custom validator reusable and configurable. On this slide right here, we have the code that we just discussed. Thank you for listening and have a great day.